Today, I've got 10 tips for your brand new ROG Ally X. These tips are in no particular order. These tips are meant for the ROG Ally X, but some of these tips will carry over to other Windows handhelds or perhaps even your Steam Deck running Windows. And of course, before we begin, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech low life really lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. So without further ado, let's begin then. Yes, I did say that these tips were in no particular order, but this one is the first thing you should do. Just pick a game and play it, like seriously. So many people get hung up on what they should do with their new product, whether it's a new Steam Deck, or a new ROG Ally, or Legion Go, anything really. People get hung up on the top 10 or so tips that you should do. My first tip to you is to just pick a game and actually play it. You want to get a feel for how the ROG Ally X experience is. Getting used to the software and getting used to the controls in how games control and perform on the ROG Ally X is pretty important. There may be some gripes here and there, and some of these tips will help alleviate some of these gripes. But before you try out any tips or tricks or fixes or whatever, you should first and foremost get accustomed to the strengths and weaknesses of the ROG Ally X. So now I guess we can get started with the actual tips. Your ROG Ally X comes with more RAM than your standard PC handheld. 24GB as opposed to the 16GB standard, an extra 8GB. Part of this RAM is dedicated to your VRAM, but you can change how much RAM is allocated to your VRAM. By going into Armory Crate, going over to the Cogwheel, pressing the Performance menu, and pressing GPU options, and inside this menu, you'll see the option to change the amount of VRAM your system has. While the tooltip on the left says that it dedicates 4GB to VRAM by default, the Ally X actually allocates 8GB by default. You can allocate more or less system RAM to VRAM. With the Ally X, I wouldn't recommend going below 8GB. Most video games won't benefit from having more RAM but less VRAM. And games that are notoriously memory hungry also benefit from having more VRAM as well, so 8 is a pretty good balance. But increasing the VRAM count does benefit higher fidelity games. The only real issue though is that it takes away from your system memory. This is also a system wide setting, meaning you have to restart your ROG Ally every time you change the setting. You also can't save VRAM settings per game, it's just not a thing. The next thing you should do is customize your quick access menu. By pressing the ROG button on the left, you can open Open up the quick access menu button. You have quick access to your brightness and volume, but also a number of different options you can add here, such as turning Wi-Fi on and off. You can actually add and remove panels to your quick access menu by going into Armory Crate and then going over to Settings. You'll see the option to edit your Command Center, which I guess that's what it's actually called. You can add and remove items at your own leisure, and in fact, there are plenty that I added before. So if you want to delete an item, you can just press X on it, and then it'll be gone. And if you wanted to add an item, just go down to the Add button, and then just select whatever options you want. I'm adding a couple of items that I think would really accentuate the experience some of which I'll be talking about in this video. But anyways, you can customize this and the next time you press the ROG button, it'll open up your command center and you'll see your brand new icons there. And while we're talking about tips, I recommend getting a dock of some sort. This video is sponsored by JSOX. JSOX's brand new dock, dubbed the 6-in-1 Multifunctional Docking Station, is a brand new type of dock. It's a slick and ultimately different looking dock. It can output 4K 120Hz through HDMI. It comes with a Type-C port, Gigabit Ethernet, and two USB 3 ports. But its true party trick is just how portable it is. It actually comes in two different pieces, the stand and the functional dock itself, making it not only suitable for all of your PC handhelds, but also your laptops as well. Be sure to check out JSOX's website in the link in the description down below. Now these next set of tips are meant to enhance your battery life, some of which I've employed in the ROG Ally X battery test video. Starting of course with CPU boost. Honestly, I forgot about CPU boost when I did the battery test video, so had I disabled CPU boost on my indie titles, I could have gotten significantly better battery life. Yes, on top of its already great battery life. Some tutorials tell you to use command line or to go into Windows settings to disable it, but you can actually enable and disable it at will through your command center. Just add the CPU boost button to your command center and you can turn it off and on at will. Do note that for higher end emulation or higher end AAA games that are CPU intensive, this will absolutely reduce your performance. And for AAA titles, it might not even result in that much of a battery improvement. 
So my advice is keep it on for AAA games and high-end emulation and turn it off for anything that doesn't need it. That said, I do wish ASUS made CPU boost a per game option. You know, go into your game settings and then disable or enable CPU boost. And on the topic of per game settings, you can have games have their own TDP settings. The Ally X comes with three different presets, but you can create more settings if so desired. To do this, you'll need to be an Armory Core. Go over to your settings and then go into performance. Immediately, you'll be in operating mode, which will let you change what preset your ROG Ally X is using at the moment. From here, you'll have access to three different presets, as well as the Windows option. The Windows option uses whatever your Windows power settings are set to, which I wouldn't recommend. And finally, the manual option. In here, you have the ability to create multiple different manual profiles. In this footage, as you can see here, I made my own plugged in performance profile. You can also make a different set of power profiles when on battery, but to do that, you'll need to unplug your ROG Ally X and do it there. And I'm not going to do that because I'm recording with a capture card. You have three main sliders. First is your sustainable power limit, basically your sustained power the entire time. The middle maintains a higher TDP for 2 minutes when necessary, and the third slider is that same thing but for 10 seconds and allows even higher TDPs. These don't go higher than the turbo presets, but you can go even lower than the quote unquote silent preset. You can also customize fan curve and all of that good stuff, and typically you can only access one manual mode at a time, which I think kind of sucks. But you can also assign manual profiles per game, which is our next tip. Learning how to set per game performance settings really helps you in the long run. In Armory Core, you'll want to select a game, press X, and then press Set Game Profile. Scroll all the way down to Configuration, and you'll see this menu right here. You can change the operating mode of a game plugged in or on battery. In the case of Celeste, you don't need that much juice to get this game running at 60 FPS, which by the way is the game's frame limit. Celeste will never go above 60 FPS, at least not without modding it. I have a custom ultra low preset, which is great for these types of games. Let's look at another game, Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2, well, it's a game that doesn't really run that well on Steam Deck, but on the ROG Ally, if you give it enough juice, it'll run pretty decent. Recently, 30 to 40 FPS, at least until you get to the main town, Vernworth. I'm going to set Dragon's Dogma 2 to Turbo because the game needs it to run well. But in addition to this configuration menu, you also have a GPU settings menu. You can enable a frame rate limit, and you can even turn on advanced AMD settings. Stuff like RSR, AMD fluid motion frames, and a lot more. A lot of this stuff wants its own video, so we'll have to talk about it later. The next thing you should do is update your ROG Allies drivers often. Armory Crate has a section in its settings where you can update the drivers. In here, you can update Armory Crate as well as your device drivers. Updating your device drivers can fix issues with hardware. Upgrading your GPU drivers can also help improve performance for brand new titles as well. Be aware though, if you have slow internet, this could take a little bit. And of course, once these finish installing, you may be prompted to restart your ROG Ally, so go ahead and do that. The next option is to go into Windows and disable all of these settings. Go into your search bar and look for Turn Windows Features On or Off. Scroll down and you'll want to turn off Virtual Machine Platform. This is used for virtualization, allowing virtual machines to run better. But this greatly impacts performance of your computer, or in this case, ROG Ally X. If you don't see yourself running Windows Subsystem for Linux or Windows Subsystem for Android on your ROG Ally, then go ahead and disable it. And this also works with your Legion Go or other Windows handhelds or even, I don't know, your Steam Deck that's running Windows. You're also going to look up Core Isolation in Windows. As it says here, it's supposed to prevent attacks from inserting malicious code into high security processes. You know, mostly Windows processes. These processes end up running slower than they would without memory integrity. And any game that would need these processes would run slower depending on how often they need it. Both of these settings have to do with virtualization, and essentially, it makes Windows a sort of virtualized machine itself. This could present a security issue, but honestly, it's a pretty big improvement in frame rate. And with these portable PCs, it's too big of an improvement movement to ignore. To be honest, I think I should have taken numbers, but whatever. You can find benchmarks of these results on the internet. The next tip is to learn how to record things from your ROG Ally. You can add the option to record to your command center, and honestly, it's pretty convenient. 
Like most other recording solutions, this will eat up some performance, but not too much in my opinion. I can see this performance loss being an issue with a game like Dragon's Dogma 2, which barely runs on the ROG Ally X. But for an indie game, the hit to performance is negligible at best. You can even view your media in Armory Crate. And the very last tip is to enable offline mode for Game Pass games. By default, you need to be online to play your Game Pass games. You need to go into the Microsoft Store and enable offline permissions. You can do this by launching the Microsoft Store, going into settings, and then just turning it on. Do note that only one device at a time can have offline permissions. That's right, between your main PC, your laptop, or your gaming handhelds, only one of them can have offline mode permissions. And there's a limit to how often you can change your primary offline device. You can only change it three times a year. So if you plan on playing Game Pass on any of your handhelds, if you have multiple handhelds even, you need to choose wisely. And that about covers every tip I have to offer for the RG Ally X, on Windows at least. I spent more and more of my time with the ROG Ally X on Windows, and these tips will take you very far no matter what type of game you're playing. No matter if you're emulating a game or playing the latest AAA title or playing a great indie game. There's more to explore with the ROG Ally X, but I think the next frontier is beyond Windows, if you catch my drift. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.